Every aircraft carrier must manage waste and implement efficient and cost-effective waste management methods present numerous obstacles. How does the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier manage its waste with less than half the population of Tampa aboard, or roughly 5,000 crew members? There is a tremendous amount of junk produced every day. The U.S. Navy is looking for a method to dispose of garbage on ships without docks. Let's look at how to dispose of 9,600 pounds of junk daily on the largest aircraft carrier. Do you know which is the biggest aircraft carrier in the world? The Gerald R. Ford class. This is regarded as the U.S. Navy's future warship, with 10 aircraft carriers planned. The first ever built aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, was put into service in 2017. During the independent burning event, ISE-7, the USS Gerald R. Ford CVN-78 served more than 100,000 reflections to the crew and another 500 boat riders. The aircraft carrier also reused 42,000 pounds of trash. Trash disposal is presumably the most important but least appreciated part of ongoing operations for a floating metropolis undertaking air operations in marine terrain. The ship would have to limit operations without a trash disposal system and eventually return to harborage to offload scrap. Ford now relies on its vital new technology, the Plasma Arc Waste Destruction System or PAWDS. To sustain the crew and passengers and maintain the boat's full functionality. This environmentally friendly system, created by Pyrogenesis in Canada, can treat the scrap produced by 5,000 mariners and is controlled by pushing a single button. Can you imagine that? The Plasma Arc Garage Destruction System, which they use for waste elimination, can burn at 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you guess how high the temperature is? The same temperature as the sun's surface. It can destroy 4,000 pounds of junk an hour, including 400 pounds of plastic, which can be safely dumped into the ocean. Unlike the traditional system's plastic pucks, which needed to be stored and left in ports, there are no rubbish products on board. Let's see how Ford's auxiliary engineering officer, Michael Knickerbocker, explains the pods fully supports flight operations. Knickerbocker states, Pods can process plastic where a standard compression melt machine can't, consuming valuable storage space for plastic pucks, which is just another thing to discharge at the port. The remarkable capacity of pods to consume plastic results from its vaporizing destructiveness rather than material burning. It also enables us to use pods during flight operations since no smoke is produced, only a non-viscous vapor. Did you know that Pyrogenesis designed and delivered the first plasma destruction device ever created for marine use? The US Navy specified the system for the ship after working with Pyrogenesis for several years to develop the pod's technology. Since an aircraft carrier may be at sea for several months without docking, the US Navy sought to create a highly portable sailor-friendly method of garbage destruction at sea. In a very competitive climate, Pyrogenesis system was chosen. It is five times smaller and half the weight of the typical marine incinerator. The USS Gerald Ford's launch highlights pyrogenesis capacity to address complex and hazardous waste concerns that no other technology can meet and reaffirms pods as a tried and true cutting edge waste management solution. Consequently, pyrogenesis is increasing the use of pods as a portable land-based waste annihilation solution for hazardous liquid and gaseous wastes. According to Gillian Hallcroft, Executive VP Strategic Alliances for Pyrogenesis. Let's see how pods plays a significant role in converting pounds of garbage into fine ash. 
FODs create synthesis gas mostly made of hydrogen and carbon monoxide by catalyzing organic matter into ionized gas using a plasma torch powered by an electric arc. The waste is turned into vapor. They employ nitrogen, helium, and oxygen gases rather than fuel, and they produce the nitrogen here on board. They become more effective due to this adjustment, which also prevents the ship from needing to undertake a fuel underway replenishment. The small ecological footprint that Ford leaves behind is another significant distinction that distinguishes pods. One pound of ash and a small amount of white smoke rather than the black smoke is left after breaking down a hundred pounds of rubbish at a molecular level. Before pods can destroy the trash on board, it must be divided into five categories. Metal, plastic, paper, food, and wood. This is because pods employs an optimum recipe to maximum efficiency. Separated waste is placed in paper bags and put into a crusher, ground into a powder resembling lint. The waste is subsequently destroyed by the plasma-fired educator and chamber, which receives continual feeds of this feedstock. The created gas is quickly cleansed, quenched and released into the atmosphere. Although it may not be a pleasant process, pods allows Ford to conduct 24-hour flight operations. Construction of each unit cost around $13 billion, while $37.3 billion was spent on research and development for the class. Isn't this an interesting fact that the USS Gerald R. Ford is the largest warship in the world, measuring 1,106 feet in length and carrying 112,000 tons of cargo? More than 4,500 crew members can board it. For the past one and a half years, sailors and shipyard workers from Newport News have been preparing the Navy's newest carrier for deployment on 18 trips off the coastlines of Virginia and North Carolina. 27% over budget and years behind schedule, the USS Gerald R. Ford, the most expensive item on the Department of Defense's shopping list, has been working quickly to introduce several new technologies to increase the Navy's striking power for at least the next 50 years. A fast track that has started 20 years ago. In a few months, Gerald R. Ford completely shocked trials and staged three explosive events as part of its first planned incremental availability, PIA. The crew also performed thorough inspections to check for potential damage during the shock trials. The team will start a lengthy training and certification period at Naval Station Norfolk, where the ship is presently based, before its first deployment in the fall of 2022. Anyway, this wraps up today's video. We hope you had fun viewing our video. In the comments section, let us know what you think about this subject. Our videos are designed for you if you are curious and an eccentric fan of this mystical world. To ensure that you don't miss any of our new content, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. See you next time.